One of the main things that we need to look at with additive manufacturing is can we actually reduce the total cost of a component and then uh, the total amount of time that it actually takes to manufacture uh, the part. Traditional manufacturing methods for a similar nozzle might take a year or multiple years to produce, um, whereas these might only take a, a couple of months at the most. The intent of the technology development is to look at different manufacturing techniques for these nozzles. One is a laser wire direct closeout, another is a, a directed energy deposition uh, technology. These are just fancy terms for 3D printing of metals or uh, metal additive manufacturing. And a couple of things that we want to look at in specific are, can we produce a nozzle that can survive hot fire realistic test conditions that true liquid rocket engines would see? Um, and in addition to that, what is their survivability, their durability? Um, can we reduce total cost of manufacturing? Uh, and then what is the total amount of time that it takes to produce one of these nozzles? So these are uh, subscale uh, liquid rocket engine nozzles that are regeneratively cooled. Um, they are used mainly for engines that are uh, upper stage or uh, in space uh, applications because they're vacuum optimized. Uh, uh, variants mainly to subject them to the highest heat loads that we can uh, and essentially try to prove out the technology through uh, hot fire test conditions. Other than uh, liquid rocket engines for space applications, uh, other than like launch vehicles uh, so to speak or any other combustion device like a chamber as opposed to a nozzle, um, so this has uh, applications in automotive, has applications in uh, aerospace, in um, uh, textiles, um, any manufacturing uh, subset of engineering. Uh, it could even work out in electrical engineering in, in some way, shape, or form for uh, producing complex shapes for like transformers or something like that.